Are you following me? Look, I don't know what kind of weird stuff you're into, but I told you already. I wanted to remind you that apart from just a doctor's appointment, you have one more. What appointment? To wash my car screen. Um, I'm actually really busy right now. I have midterm coming up and I'm heading to the library. After this, I will come and do the needful. Mr. Erickson, what are you doing here? Get in the car, Emma. She wasn't sure what made her get in. There was something about him that made you feel you needed to do what he said. When she saw the corner of his lips curl up, there was a hint of evil in his smile. In her intoxicated state the previous night, Emma Green made the impulsive choice to accompany a charming billionaire to his home, a decision that would alter her life in ways she couldn't foresee. As she woke up, her surroundings revealed a dimly lit, opulent room. Panic set in when she discovered her nudity and searched the room frantically for her clothing. At her feet, she noticed a pair of men's briefs, and her heart sank when she spotted red stains on the sheets. It was the final damning evidence of a night she couldn't fully recall. This was not a dream. This had happened. She lost her virginity. You're awake. Mr. Erickson. After everything we did last night, you still think we aren't on a first name basis. You should take a shower. The water pressure is excellent. Uh, uh, no thanks. I need to leave. Mr. Erickson? Can we forget that anything happened between us last night? If you're worried about any STDs, I can assure you I'm still a virgin. Was. Was a virgin. The only person that's lost anything here is me. Rest assured, I have no reason to believe you have any diseases. However, I want to ask if you want anything from me. You don't strike me as the kind of person that wants money for a first time. Yeah, I don't want your money. I just want you to keep this a secret. I did not know it was your first time in bed with someone. As compensation, I will allow you one demand. You can ask anything of me. Except, make you fall in love with me. Mr. Erickson, I think you misunderstood. I don't go out to give myself away, so I won't trade myself for anything. In fact, I plan now to officially quit working. Because from here on, I'm going to be focusing on my graduation thesis. We won't be seeing each other again. So I'm going to wish you a good life. Goodbye. Robert's mouth twitched with surprise and amusement. Emma Green's unexpected departure and assertive demeanor had caught his attention. Emma had made a memorable impression as the first woman to ever walk out on him. He picked up the scarf she had left behind by mistake and began to inhale its scent. Emma Green's enigmatic words had presented him with an intriguing challenge, and he eagerly contemplated what the future might hold. In a northern city, Robert Erickson, CEO of the Erickson Emblem Corporation, represented power, wealth, and danger. Rumor had it that he had killed his older brother and left his younger brother traumatized to become the sole inheritor of the family business. If there was a person in this world that Emma didn't even dare to think about, it was him. 
Yet, this was the person whom she had foolishly spent the night with. The person looked like a seductive god. Adding to the complexity of the situation, the Ericsson Emblem Corporation wasn't just an ordinary company. It stood as the primary rival to the Mayer Group of Industries that was owned by Emma's father. Yes, indeed. She had slept with her father's most bitter adversary. What are you doing walking around in this neighborhood? Like either of you care. Please, Kristen, save me from the nice girl next door talk. I'm sorry. Okay, it's it's my fault. I'm the one that seduced said. If you want to blame anyone, blame me. Emma stood facing the devastating betrayal that had rocked her world. If she hadn't walked in on them cheating on her yesterday, her drunken night of debauchery could have been avoided. No. She's drunk. I'm sorry, Emma. Emma looked at them both, but didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Emma thought that this only happened in vulgar novels. One of them was her boyfriend. The other was her best friend and roommate. Ted, you don't have to worry about me. Kristen, he's all yours. And as far as you and I go, this friendship is done. Goodbye. Emma! 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 Don't! A black Cadillac turns into the road, heading towards Emma. Move, move, move! Emma, don't! Emma! Oh! It turned out to be Robert. However, by that point, it was already too late. Once again, she had acted impulsively, only to regret it afterward. Are you stalking me now? Take me to Elm Road or I'll sue you for being a perv. Do as this lady says. And what's up with you? Didn't I tell you I never want to see you again? Are you surprised to see me? Well, yes. What are you doing here? Miss Green, you were the one sitting in my car. Yes. Sorry. That was my boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, and my best friend. Well, I thought she was my best friend who are apparently now a thing. Anyways, I'm sorry. I just had to get out of that situation. So you thought, let's take up hitchhiking and jump in a new one. Sorry? Emma looked at Robert with a perplexed expression, unsure of what he meant by his cryptic remark. She followed his gaze down to her muddy shoes. I promise, Robert, I'll clean your car. I'm sorry for making a mess. I'll appreciate that. You should be more careful. Someone dangerous might pick you up. Although his words made sense, Emma felt like there was something more to how he meant them. Something felt wrong with what he said. Okay. Take care. Even after Emma left the car, he couldn't shake the seductive memories of their passionate night. Resting on the examination table, she gazes uncomfortably at the various posters displayed on the wall, each one depicting information regarding STDs and pregnancy. Please don't be pregnant, please don't be pregnant. Use the condom, didn't he? Oh, you wouldn't have sex with a random girl without protection. Would you? Okay. 
Seamus Green. Your test results are ready. You can put your clothes back on for now. You can also meet me in the waiting room. Hi. Okay. Your STD results are negative, which is good. Pregnancy test is negative. However, during my examination, I have found some minor bleeding and swelling. It is due to an intense sexual encounter, most likely within the last 12 hours. I will prescribe some pain medicine for you. You should abstain from all sexual activities in your current state. And even if you need to, you should not be using any toys or tools until you're fully healed. Did he not understand that before yesterday she was a virgin? She was not interested in toys or tools whatsoever. In fact, she wasn't even interested in the man she lost her virginity to. <laughs> that won't be a problem. Okay then, I'll leave it to you. You can pick up your prescription from the pharmacy, and if there's any further pain or discomfort, you can call us back anytime. And don't worry, it's not to be ashamed of. It's normal. On the other hand, within the girl's dormitory, an undeniable tension hung thick in the air, giving life to conversations that revolved solely around Emma Green's heartbreak. What was once the cherished love story, admired by many, had crumbled into a heap of emotional ruins, all thanks to Kristen. Kristen, now notorious as the university's most talked about mistress, had masterfully enticed Emma's boyfriend, Ted, into a secretive affair. This revelation had struck Emma like a bitter blow, shattering her once promising romance. Kristen, I want you to move out. Why? What did I really do wrong? Now that I think of it, Ted only slept with me because you couldn't give him what he wants. I couldn't give him what he wanted because I'm not a prostitute. I was saving myself for the right time. Plus? I, I am saving myself. Emma, it's college. We're not all as prude as you. I definitely wasn't holding him back. I said it already. I don't want Ted anymore. You can keep him. But this dormitory, as long as I'm here, you need to leave. Really? You move out then. My parents already paid for the semester, and as far as I'm concerned, you are the one struggling to tutor to pay your dues. Okay. But you're gonna regret it. doing here, Mr. Erickson? I figured my CAD isn't within your caliber, so I barred at the job. What exactly do you want from me? Just have a meal with me. Isn't that better than cleaning my car? Today's task is to laugh and eat. Don't talk nonsense. Emma found out that they would not be eating alone. They had company, a woman. Hello, Robert. And uh, you are? This is Samuel's tutor. Her name is Miss Green. Hello, I'm Jennifer Walt. Well, I used to be Samuel's tutor. I resigned to focus on my thesis. Uh, hi, Miss Walt. I was afraid I was disturbing you and your other commitments. You're not, but I had to bring Miss Green here because I made an appointment with her first. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. The more the merrier. 
I just hope Miss Green doesn't mind that I already ordered food according to what you like. It's just that I don't know what Miss Green likes. I'll just ask someone to come with the menu. No need, Miss Walt. I'm not picky. She isn't picky about food. What I like, she likes to eat. That's good. Miss Green will have more to eat later. Emma was embarrassed. During the meal, Robert would occasionally offer her portions of his food. He was being very gentle, almost like a boyfriend. Jennifer didn't say much. However, she would occasionally glance at Emma, but Emma could not recognize any of the emotions in her eyes. Was Robert asking Emma to be in some part of a threesome? The way they spoke to each other was odd. Part business, part lover. But Emma couldn't quite put her finger on it. Do you mind if I have a chat with Rob for a moment? No worries. Shall we go for a walk? How have you been? I'm fine. Don't try to piss me off. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm not angry at you. I happen to think Miss Green isn't that bad, don't you? I know you're Robert. You're doing this to make me jealous. I think you should go back. There'll be a meeting in the afternoon. I still need to drop Emma off at school. What are you laughing at? You like Miss Waltz. Wait. You brought me here to provoke her on purpose, didn't you? You didn't really have to do that. She obviously has some strong feelings for you as well. You don't know what you're talking about. I suggest you refrain from speaking to me out of your place in the future. Emma watched him with confusion. In the future, they would never see each other again. And what was her place with Robert? Get in the car. I'll take you back to school. No thanks, I'll take the bus. Hello. We really have to stop meeting like this. It's starting to creep me out. Get in the car, Em. Give me my bag, please. It'll take you at least an hour and a half to jog from here to your school. Are you sure you can still make it in time for class? Someone called you just now. You answered my phone? What if it was something urgent? What did he say? He just asked who I was and where you were. So, how did you answer? Is it important? This is my phone. You answered it without my permission. I have every right to know the subject of conversation. I said I'm your extortion target. Your bag was in my car. So, you're a boyfriend, right? Ex-boyfriend. Did you guys fight? That has nothing to do with you, Mr. Erickson. Without saying another word, she turned around and walked towards the school. But not long after she walked, nearby, someone shouted. Emma! Jack! As Robert observed the car parked across from him, his face turned pale with surprise. Was that Jack Mayer, the eldest son of the Mayer family? It seemed that he had greatly underestimated Emma Green. You said you'd be gone for two months. Yeah, Dad broke his leg a few days ago, so I came back early. Do you want me to take you to go see him? Mm, you still can't forgive him. How can I? Besides, I know my place. 
Emma, don't be like that. I've never treated you like an outsider. I know. So, is that, uh, Erickson? Yeah, in that car. Robert. Hmm. And how do you know him? I'm his brother's tutor. So, you're still working. What about that card I gave you? Emma, that's not the mayor's family's money. That's me giving a gift to my sister. Yeah, but you still have the mayor's surname. Emma, stop being so stubborn. I feel bad for you. Don't. I really like my life right now. Well, at least promise me you'll stay away from Robert Erickson. He's very dangerous. I know. I'm not stupid. Brother, I'm running late. I really have to go. All right. Let me take you out for dinner tonight. I'll pick you up. Send me the address. I'll see you later. Okay. Robert Erickson was not someone who would just drop Emma off at school to be a good guy. What was his agenda? Could it be possible that he had stumbled upon some crucial information? A revelation that could potentially unravel secrets and hidden truths? As the wheels of speculation spun in Jack's mind, he couldn't help but wonder if Robert's actions held a deeper purpose. Why are you here? This is my house. I've been waiting for you. Waiting for me? I told you I was handing in my resignation. Well then, I should ask you. Why are you here? Wouldn't a call or an email suffice? Oh. I wanted to tell Samuel in person. I felt it was only right. Right. From now on, I think you should stay here and focus more on helping Samuel with his studies. Wait. You mean live here? That's right. Samuel has a month before the college entrance exam. He needs all the help he can get. Plus, it'll be more convenient for you to stay here. No. I'm a student. I have to stay at the dormitory. Besides, this place is too far from campus. It's inconvenient to be going back and forth. Oh, I can help you with the accommodation to your school. No jogging back and forth and whatnot. I can send you a car. It's a win-win. That's not necessary. What I mean is, it's inappropriate for us to live together and to live with someone I teach. I did not realize that your thoughts were so vulgar. Could it be that you like Samuel? Samuel is just my student. Then do you like me? Of course not. Since you don't like either of us, what's there to be afraid of? Miss Green, I think I still need to remind you that you were the one who took the initiative that night. <laughs> You're a man. I don't believe you didn't have the power to reject me. You don't seem to know very much about men. Most men would never reject a woman who voluntarily throws herself into their arms, unless that man's sexual function is lacking. Speaking of which, I'm a little curious. Yesterday, I saw you talking to Ted Smith. Today, you were hugging Jack Mayer. Miss Green, it seems that I have totally underestimated your ability with the opposite sex. You and I are not close. I don't feel any obligation to share my secrets. I do not need you interfering in my personal matters. Also, you promised to keep what happened between you and I private. Of course, I've never told anyone about the matter of you sleeping with me. Then why pry into my love life? I'm just trying to win the argument based on what you said. You're not the only non-family member living in my house. It's not appropriate to think of this arrangement as inappropriate while you live here. You're like the other people I've hired. I'll provide the food and the shelter. You'll be responsible for teaching Samuel here. That's all.
Miss Green's living arrangements have been negotiated. You can begin your lessons. Emma was speechless. Who did he negotiate with? It was him who made the decision. However, if she really thought about it, this could also be a good idea. She had planned on moving out of the dormitory anyway. It would get her away from Kristen for good. She could use the next month to find a new house to live in. After she finished her tutoring session with Samuel, she rushed to the restaurant. Perfect timing. Dinner has just been served. Thank you. Eat slowly. It's not like anybody's going to snatch it from you. <laughs> you can't win against me. I'll eat it all. Everything. Okay. You eat it all. If we need to order some more, not a problem. If Angie was here and saw how skinny you are, it would probably make her heart ache to death. Jack, please. Okay, okay, please, just eat. Elsa, what brings you here? Why are you like this? You came from overseas and you didn't even come to visit your actual sister. Instead, you're here having dinner with her, the illegitimate daughter. Shut up. She was the illegitimate daughter to begin with, disgrace to her mother. How could you be so nice to her? Elsa, you need to be more respectful, okay? Jack, at the end, I am your real sister. Miss Mario, please, speak to me with respect. First of all, I don't have a father. Secondly, I have never used a single cent of the mayor family's money, even when my mother was ill and hospitalized. Even when we needed money to save her life, not even then did I ask for help. No one in the mayor family has the right to criticize me. Your existence is a disgrace. I'm proud to be my mother's daughter, whether you like it or not. Emma, 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 please. Elsa, she's... Brother, don't speak anymore. Save some dignity for me. I'll leave first. Call me if you need anything. Are you satisfied? I miss you so much. Where are you hitting? If you're busy, you can just drop me at the dorms. I'll be fine by myself. I had planned to go home. Mr. Erickson. Miss Green's room has been arranged. It is on the first floor of Samuel's residence. Samuel is studying for his college entrance exam. Wouldn't it distract him to have Miss Green staying there? Oh, yes. Arrange it with me. We can put her up for the month. Yes, sir. Another one bites the dust. 